away, Douglas. Okay, thank you. So, my name is Christine Gardner from the Open University, and I've been working on um, on a data analytics project with um, Alan Jones, David Chapman, and Helen Jeffries. Alan and David are both um, part of the TM355 module team, as am I. That's a communications technologies module uh, with the Open University. Helen Jeffries is also part of our communication and um, our computer and communication school. I'm not directly attached to the module, but she, she, does, um, she does work um, with, um, with a lot of the Open University staff in our school. So um, just to tell you a little bit about the module itself, it's a distance learning module. Most of the, um, most of the materials are print-based, um, but as it's a level three module, that equates to um, sort of third level at conventional university, there, um, there are some quite difficult concepts within the module. So we've developed some online resources to supplement the, um, the printed text. And um, the, the focus of this, um, this research project is actually on those online resources that supplement the, um, the written text with the module. And the module itself is divided into three blocks. Um, the first one is about um, signal processing, and the second block is, um, is about, um, about coding and, um, and error correction of those um, transmitted codes. And the third block of the module is about the that kind of um, those kinds of topics. So, if we just um, have a quick look at the um, the sort of outline of this research, there are two main aspects. We're using data analytics in the first part of um, the project, and specifically, what we want to know is how students on this module engage with the, te the technology enhanced learning and teaching tools that we've devised to help the students with those tricky topics as they get to that point in the module. We want to know whether they're using the tools at predicted points. We want to know if they go back and use those uh, tools again. And we want to know if the, the kind of student engagement is changing with the different presentations of the modules because um, we don't know whether this previous presentation was typical, for example. But to supplement that, we also wanted to um, we also wanted to interview some of the students just to get more of an insight into how they're using the tools. Um, do the, do the um, technology enhanced learning tools actually help them to understand the topics um, better, or um, are they are they deterred from using these? Um, these online tools because they're too complicated or they're too time consuming, etc. We really want to know a bit more about why they're using them or why they aren't using them. So um, what, we, um, what we actually used was this um, analytics tool, Analytics for Action, which was developed at the Open University. And um, what, we're, what we've actually been doing is looking at the analytic data investigating specific issues, and where we are at the project in the moment is identifying actions and prioritizing those actions before thinking about um, selecting the methodologies and evaluating outcomes. So this is a work in progress um, pro um, report at the moment. What, um, what we're trying to do is, um, is actually see how specific students are using the, um, the online tools. But the analytics for action um, analytics tool actually identifies how students are using particular tools at a sort of a top level. It doesn't give us the actual detail on which students are, are using which actual online resources. And just to give you, um, just to give you an example, um, this, first, this first example at the top it's actually showing um, the discrete cosine transform online tool and how students are using it. And if you, can, if you look at the, um, the top there with the, um, with the blue bar, that's actually an assessment point on the module. And with this particular online tool, you can see that the students, um, they realize that this particular topic is, is relevant to their, their assessment at the end of a block and they've gone to the relevant tool and they've used it. There's a very obvious peak there. 
And if you look at the, um, the screenshot at the bottom with humming, humming codes, there's actually a different um, pattern use there. Um, again, the blue bars are indicating assessment points. The first one is the end of the first block, and the, the second blue bar is the end of the second block. The third blue bar is the end of the third block. So with this particular online tool, you can see that the students have used the Helen Codes online tool throughout the block. There's some peaks and troughs, but it's been used throughout, um, throughout the relevant block. And then there's a peak at the end where the students have gone back and used it for revision. So what's, um, what we did was actually have a look at how the students, um, the students actually performed during the exam at the end of the module to see if it made any difference whether the students actually used the, um, the online resources at revision time and also um, question them to see if they didn't use them, why aren't they being used more extensively because a lot of time and effort has actually gone into devising and developing the tools so we'd like to know a bit more about why they are or are not being used. So um, the particular prompt for this research was an exam question that was set in, in um, the 2016-2017 presentation. And it was based on error, error control codes, um, one of the block two um, topics. And the exam scores for this particular question were relatively low and we knew that there was a specific online tool which would have been very helpful for the students had they used that tool in their revision. So using the analytics for action, we could actually have a look to see um, how that tool was used and whether it actually made a difference to those students. So the particular question was not a popular choice with the students. Um, we could have a look at the top level data we could see this particular tool was used in the, the relevant block of the module. Some of the students went back and used it at revision time, but um, only about 20% of the student cohort actually used the, um, the relevant error control codes online resource. So what we wanted to do was um, check the analytics data we could see that um, we could see that that there were a subset of students that we would like to investigate further. That is those who actually answered that particular exam question, and we worked with the TEL team to interrogate the analytics data um, more deeply. So, in particular, we wanted to know if those students who answered the question actually used the associated online tool. So. Um, to supplement that, we also wanted to ask the students questions about whether they used the tool and um, also check to see if the analytics data was actually given us the type of responses that we were expecting. So when we actually looked at the data, we could see which students used that particular, um, that particular online tool. And what we found when we matched that to their exam scores was um, the overall exam score for that particular question um, was 45%. For those who used, um, for those who didn't use the um, technology enhanced learning and teaching tool at all, um, their exam score was 30% overall. And if they used that particular tool at least once, um, their um, their exam score averaged at 53%. If they used the tool specifically at revision time, the average score was 52%. And if they used the online tool multiple times, they actually averaged out at 58%. So although this is quite a small, this is quite a small sample of students, it was encouraging to see that the, um, the, the data actually was, was looking, um, looking like those students who used the, um, used the online tools were actually performing slightly better. And as it was a very small sample, we wanted to see if, um, if this particular group were any different to 
the cohort as a whole. So we used a different predictive analytic tool. Um, this is a tool that's used by the student support team to see whether our sample of students who answered that question were any different to the students who didn't answer that question. And um, looking at the, the overall predicted pass rates, our sample very slightly weaker than the cohort that didn't answer that question. We had 0.85 um, probability of passing versus 0.87. So there's no particular reason why those students should have performed badly on that question. So what, um, what we wanted to do to follow this up was to find out a little bit more about why students were or were not using the, um, the online resources. So um, we interviewed a small sample of students and, and had some, um, some quotes from them that um, seeing the coding in practice and having interaction actually helped with, um, with their understanding of the topic. And the online resource is also very good for self-testing, and that was noted by several students in the sample. And one of the comments from um, the students was, why wouldn't you use these resources? And that's exactly what we were trying to, um, trying to find out. So um, obviously, there are also some negative comments, and um, a comment there, just a video clip, didn't really add anything. But overall, the comments were, were relatively positive. So what we want to do now is actually to progress this. And um, what, we, what we think will help is to, um, to give some indication of the time needed for the activities um, and then add some descriptions on um, what kind of activities they are, because some of them are, um, are interact well, they are interactive of different types. So give some kind of um, indication of what they're like, promote them in the student forums, um, possibly have some sort of talking heads on, on how students are using the interactive tools, and also mentioning them in, in our introductory um, or revision, revision sessions that we're producing for the module. So, um, so we're in this phase now of, um, of actually thinking about how that will best work. So we're going to produce some descriptions and timings for the activities and um, review the use of the, the um, technology enhanced learning and teaching tools for the next presentation, add advice to a revision podcast, and interview the next cohort of students and then see if that has actually made any difference. So, um, and then what we'll also do is consider additional guidance when we come to the midlife review of the module itself. So, um, let's say any questions? Thank you very much. Okay, so any questions for Christine? Um, I haven't seen any come through me too. Obviously, you're very welcome to do that. Question here from the floor. Can we just wait for the microphone, please? I'm uh, Richard Treves, also from the OU, so I'm, I'm in the oh, tel team. Okay. I, I was just interested, so it was just video, it didn't actually get the students to practice anything or do anything? Oh, no, they were interactive, so the students um, were using, using um, various interactive tools to input different data, for example, and actually playing with the, um, with, with the interactive tools. So it wasn't, it wasn't watching videos, it was interactive. Yeah. Okay. Let's say Helen's here, who is also um, also working on the project. question at the top. Hi, the, um, the data that the percentages you 
shown there, and there were sample sizes are massive, but the, um, it does show some compelling evidence. Had you thought about carrying out some statistical analysis just to see whether or not there was a statistically significant difference between the samples? Yes, yeah, as I say, we haven't done that because the sample size was so small. That was why it seemed to make more sense to, um, to sort of compare that cohort to the other students who hadn't answered the questions. But it's certainly something that we can look into because, as I say, this is sort of a work in progress. So, um, so I think what might be useful is to actually break down the, um, that cohort of 48 students into those who did reasonably well compared to those who didn't and then review their, their online tool use further to see whether there's any difference there, and then possibly work on that data to see if there is some significance there. Okay, maybe one more question. Okay, maybe I, I'll ask it then. <laughs> so, um, you were shown sort of aggregated data there. I mean, was there any chance you could actually look at individual students' uh, usage patterns to see sort of uh, any sort of interesting kind of categorization of use? Yes, that was, um, that was where we managed to get the student details from the aggregated data to go back and see how those particular students answered the exam questions. Right. Um, but that is something that, to say, we can work further yeah, on that sure. to break it down to see who did well and who didn't do so well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed.